if they want you to take that thermostat off they're gonna have to call you to get or somebody another contractor is gonna have to go in there and take it off and guess what Wait. you're gonna get an alert saying hey your thermostat's been deactivated now you know somebody else took that customer from you and guess what you send them roses a gift card of hey did we do something wrong right you actually know that there's something wrong right now nobody knows yeah, shit. Right. like customers are pissed off at us at next gen or whatever company you're at nobody knows you know how you find out a yelp review a google yeah, right. review all that and you want to you want to protect your image no matter what so now you're going to be able to find a pissed off client before they go on yelp before they go on google right hey what's up to the point listeners it's your boy chris i'm excited because i got my buddy in the studio today um and what you don't know is behind the scenes this is actually take two take two so i want to you know there, there's a, this thing called accountability we talk about on here from time to time and and sometimes as great as our podcast production is we have some flubs <laughs> we have some flubs <laughs> Maybe this was on purpose and Ishmael set that shit up right out of the gate. Is that what happened? So uh, anyway, we were doing this again. I have my good buddy Ishmael Valdez sitting in here. What up, what up? Face to face with me, trying to play footsie. Uh, so I had to keep moving a little bit further <laughs> away from him. But we were- Let me find out, Chris. <laughs> we were talking um, uh, pre-podcast about our co different commitments and I was busting his chops because he need to make sure he made it on time. And uh, and no, he didn't make it on time. Time it was I only made 15, it though. Fifteen minutes late. That's a that's a that's, win. That's a win for me. That's a W uh, <laughs> for Ishmael. And, and so we're in here. I'm excited, man, because you and I, um, you know, especially over the last let's call it year, have become even closer. And I know all the things about you, and you know all the things about me. And we have yep. our peer group, our LSD crew, that we talk about all the stuff through. So like, we're family. Dope as group. And um, and so I'm excited to share some of those things on here too. And listen, you've been on a ton of podcasts. You've got a lot of different episodes. And and what was interesting whenever you and I were talking about what we're, you know, or we're texting back and forth to what we're going to talk about on this podcast. And I was thinking back, you know, the first time I ever heard you uh, present was at Rhino X. Our very yeah. first Rhino X. You're right. And you <laughs> sucked. I know. I was nervous. <laughs> well, I know you're nervous, but it's interesting because actually what you were saying was good, but you were so fucking nervous that it was kind of coming out like yeah. all over the board. Kind of like Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good shit, but it's like kind of hard to, hard to follow it. Yeah. But, but I, you know, I've heard you speak many times since then. And just, you know, I think back to, to that situation and where you even were, yeah. you know, then to, to now, like you've come a long way, man. Like Appreciate I'm it. super proud of you, of you just from like that perspective, just forget business. Like I'm talking like going out, getting your shit together, actually creating some slides and somewhat following them is yeah. another win for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those some slides are just meant to, meant to keep you on track for us who have ADHD. So I agree, but i um, excited to have you on here and talk through a, a couple of different things on this one. One, <laughs> um, you know, in our, in our group, we talk about a lot of different things in our LSD group. We talk about a lot of different things. Um, Probably 60% of it we would be canceled for, so we won't share that 60%. <laughs> That's so the we'll dopest part, though. We'll talk about the other 40%. Uh, but we talk, you know, about all, all types of stuff from operational stuff to sales to labor management to... Comparing comparing each other's, you know numbers and what we're doing that's that's probably like my favorite part in yeah, the wins the losses the losses like, are dope too and what's cool cool about it is um you know everybody's accomplished some things in the group so it is relatable um but we're also not afraid to call each other out on our bullshit agree you know and i, I like that part but everybody like I, I the last one that we were in i don't think you ran because you had a board meeting yep. um i i maybe said like two words yep. i was just taking notes yep and it was like, that's part of what's cool about it is even though it didn't directly like pertain to me, it's the knowledge I get from the contractor perspective to oh, yeah. understand like what the hell's going on. What are some things you guys face? Um, which then allows me to coach my team who's talking to contractors to say, Hey, be aware of these things, yep. have these conversations. So, so bringing you on and talking through some of that is, is important. And, and, and to kick it, you know, to kick it off for the listeners, I want to hit on this labor management piece of it. You know, and I know you've kind of gotten beat up a little bit on uh, in your market on some of these things too, and I and others are experiencing the same shit everywhere, um, all over. And and so mm -hmm. I want to address it, um, and then talk about you know what like what's the pivot? You know what, what do we do? do? Yeah, well, ex true. especially because you built like you once you really got solid leadership in places when you were really able to scale next gen. Like yep. I, I think if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in uh, at the end of last year you finished 
just sub 130 is there somewhere in that mark? where the hell where did you finish I think it was last like year? 116 I okay think. so 116 so um leading up to that though do you, you do you, everybody or i think most people have heard the story about you met tom howard when you're in your 30 yep. millions or 38 yep. million or somewhere around there and then you started to learn what gross profit was yes. <laughs> and all that shit. PNL. <laughs> exactly all the things and so um but to where it is today you know post acquisition and all the things and you're involved with it and you've actually been through quite a journey even post acquisition man bro i mean you learned a lot about yourself in yeah. post acquisition and you've also learned a lot about how you can have good leadership, but there's nobody who can replace you. I uh, dude, that was 2023 lesson. Uh-huh. That was business. fucking crazy, man. So, um, it, even though, you know, it was still a, uh, another, another big year at next gen, of course. you, you wake up. And I think that what, I think what you told me is you wake up like you're broke every morning. Every <laughs> fucking day, bro. So I feel broke too. And I'm like, dude, you know, after all the money, I, I, we, obviously it's still there and we, you know, the, the, the wealth is still there, but like, I think it's a fucking feeling that I just have every single day. I wake up, I'm like, dude, I need to make money. The fuck? <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> it, it, I, actually, it's a, uh, it, I think probably the thing I, I've, I've loved learning the most about you mm. is, you know, you've got, uh, those of you who listen to, to Ishmael, um, talk at, whether it be Pantheon or on yep. podcasts or mm. at X or wherever, man, you've seen him speak. There's been like different phases of of him, um, and in different levels of or different levels of professionalism along the way. I know like how to I know all the behind the scenes shit on Ishmael Valdez, and he's got a big ass heart. And I knew that from the beginning. I told you that from the beginning. I, yep. could, I could see that, and it's just how do you express it? Yeah, and that's the part I'm talking about. Like that's coming out differently now. Like you, you're like I don't want to say growing up, but you're growing up in the professional oh, yeah. world. Like you know you and and that's a big deal. But part of it is your mentality on like, you hear Goodridge say this, he's, he's always a student. As yep. much as this dude is accomplished, yep. he's still always a student. Um, I'm not sure he's waking up thinking he's, you know, poor. Yeah, of or, course. You know, but, you know what? I, I beg to differ, man. Me and Ken relate in a lot of things. And I text, we probably text a hundred times a day now. <laughs> and, and and we talk a lot now. And I, I'm telling you like, you know, he's, he's beyond wealthy now. And I promise you, he still wakes up and still hungry. Yeah. He still wants to learn. He's still asking, he, he's asking me questions. Yeah. He's asking like, you know, dope ass questions that make you think. Yeah. Well, and that's what, mm. so that's what I like about that too. The only downside to it is, uh, it, it's always business with, cause oh, yeah. that's it. Like that is what Dude, he loves to do. That's his hobby. That's his life. And then that's our life too. Yeah. It's not, you know, yeah, we, we have little, you know, side things that we do here and there, yeah. but like, dude, 90% of the time that me and you are talking or 95% of the time that we're on LSD, we're talking, you know, shit about yeah, right. business. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's all what we can enjoy. And it's like, yep. you know, my, and we can relate. Yeah. And if I go home, Anna sure as hell does not want to hear any exactly. of that. Exactly. So, that too. You know, and, and I think it's what is what is cool about, um, <clears throat> and, you know, Rhino X is coming up here in a few weeks. And um, yeah. I mean, if, if I can't wait. flew by. We just made the announcement, you know, today that Coach Saban is coming in to be the keynote speaker, which is huge. He just retired. Like, this is going to be, I'm so, I was so excited. I didn't think it was going to happen. We had to jump through so many hoops to get it done. And then we got Flo Rida closing out with another private concert. That's dope. But you were involved in like a bunch of shit. So it's not just the next gen stuff. You've got Nuve, you've got Data Cube, you've got the roofing game too. Yep. So you see that's what I'm here. You've got your hibachi (laughs) restaurants, fucking juice bars. Like you're getting into that retail restaurant you know, business. And it's because you're getting smarter at business oh, yeah. and then you're able to see more uh, because you've had so many conversations, like if Goodrich, you know, you know, is picking at you or asking you questions, like it you know, causes you to think this is what I love about Rhino X because it doesn't matter what size of business you mm-hmm. are. You're going to learn some shit from Dude, somebody the, in that. The, not just not just learn something in there. The knowledge, the concentrated knowledge that you get at Rhino X, you don't get it anywhere else because everywhere everywhere else there's 500, 1,000, yeah. 2,000 people spread out into different rooms. So you don't get that intimacy of like, hey, I have your attention for 10 minutes, yeah. like just me. That's the dopest part about about Rhino. It's like the 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 vibe that's in there. That the contractors that do come in that want to learn from us, like they get to experience ten minutes of Goodridge or ten minutes of Leland, where they're they have your full attention. Right, that's dope. Yeah, that and that's the most exciting part for me is just watching it happen. Like, cause I'm proud that I was able to bring that shit together oh, and, dope, can, and keep bringing it together. I th- I think and may, I think this might be Geiger's last run. Damn. 
So at uh, on the Legends panel because I really had, I really had to talk him into it this year. Yeah, he's old. You gotta you gotta give it to him. He's I mean, old. he's just trying to do his thing, man. <laughs> so um, okay, so I want to 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 move forward. One, I'm excited for you. So you'll be back here in a. In a I'm not sure when you're ever in town or not in town. You usually tell like <laughs> to the day of, <laughs> and you don't even live that far away from me. Uh, your house is close to mine, but it'll be exciting to have all my boys here. You know, oh, in yeah. town and all the wait. speakers, and and we have you know added some. You know, I got. Be from even even in your wrench family, not only do we have your daddy in town, <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> uh, Kenny in town, but we got Morris. we got Bancroft and, and and Paul Kelly. So we're doing it a little bit different. I don't want to ruin the surprise in case somebody hears it, but we're doing a little bit different with those two. Hey, but before you move on for, to the subject, um, JB Jonathan Morris Jenkins. That like if I could tell you one like one person that I'm excited to see speak. I've seen him speak at a board meeting for like a quick 15 minutes. If there's one person in the room that everybody should be listening to is that dude. Yeah. That dude has profit, growth, like his level of intelligence in the operational side of it and on the sales side of it is fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. Such a, I mean, I've known him a long time. He the, doesn't, you he, don't see him go and speak anyway. No, like, man. That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I'm saying though. Like you brought him up to Rhino X is a dude, just, if you would just put Jonathan up there for an hour to talk to us, it's worth the whole trip. Yeah, it's, that that guy's a beast. Well, I'm excited for it too. Um, you know, so so I wanted to uh, you know, to not go down the path too much longer and waste time. I want to get into this labor management stuff Let's do it. because you know, um, even though we hear it in our groups, I hear it from contractors all over the place. Oh, yeah. And and I just had a, I just had a podcast uh, a few weeks ago uh, with uh, Alicia Green, seventeen million dollar company um, in the triad, which is in North Carolina. And, and she's got so much private equity in her market, like every, like apex turn point, yeah. rent, every, it's like SoCal. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, and, and so with that comes competition, know, she, she's got, she's got good leadership that had come in from some of those deals because they left for X, Y, Z reason. Some of it being, you know, maybe they did, it's not about like a, uh, a turn point specifically, but it's about who's now leading the charge at uh, that hundred percent. And then, so you'll hear people leave leaders, you know, not so oh, many yeah. companies. So, but it's, I'm hearing this so frequently on, on almost every other conversation I have is, is around, you know, um, some people are losing great talent while oh, yeah. others are gaining that great talent. Yeah. And you're experiencing some of both, these things. Both. I'm, you know, I'm gaining right. great talent. I'm, you know, I lost a couple of people that I shouldn't have lost. And, uh, but dude, the, the labor management side of it is where the biggest opportunity for the mom and pop shops are right now. That's the biggest opportunity for, you know, private equity came in here and swept us all. And you, dude, there's, there's, there's a side of private equity that people don't like. And you, people don't talk about it is the compliance side. Yeah. The compliance, the, the, you know, you got to do things a certain way to be able to protect the whole pie. Right. Right. So, and, and there's some people that aren't meant to be in the corporate world. So those people are going to go to, you know, somewhere where they feel more valued, comfortable, whatever they, whatever they're looking for. But dude, the labor management side right now, both, you know, how much it's going to cost us to keep labor in the private equity side and on the, on, on the private side is, is insane right now. That's, that's one of the main topics that I want to talk about today for sure. So, so <clears throat> Like, you know, I just, this has come up more recent with, <clears throat> with you because we've been talking, talking about it. Like, what are you doing, man? Like what, what is the, what's the, did you have to pivot? Is there a game plan? Is it just, Hey, I got to pay closer attention to this or to that or like what? So dude, you, uh, honestly, like it comes down to, uh, energy, energy and attention. Like these, it, everybody in, you know, North of $25 million cashed out and, you know, private equity came in there and, you know, they put structure in there. They put compliance in there. Some people don't like that. Some people like walking into work and, you know, you know, not feeling like they have to perform at a certain number. They have to, you know, you know, work on a certain KPI. They have to work like they don't want to feel like they're being used to, you know, capitalize on, on uh, to, to recapitalize on, on something. Right. Some people just want to come to work and have fun. And that's, I think that the, the dark side of the private equity, um, not everyone is the same. Like I, I got lucky with ranch and, you know, they let us do our own thing, but like now you have private equity money everywhere. Yeah. Right. Now you have like Southern California is probably the biggest private equity game. Right. Because we were there's, uh, you know, 
50 million people in there. There's a hundred thousand contractors. Monster players. A monster, right? So, yeah. so now these people, these private equity uh, people figured out that in order for them to scale a business, <clears throat> they need better people. Yeah. They need more people. They need higher quality people, right? So now it's grabbing from, from everybody's grabbing from each other's pocket, to be honest with you. And that's the bad side of it because some people are leaving for money, but most people, um, I think, feel a certain way, a comfort of, of going to work for somebody that still owns their own company and that isn't going to, you know, put cameras on their vehicles and put microphones on their vehicles and do, like all the little extra shit that took like the business side, it bulletproofs the business. That's the, the dope side. But on the, on the downside, it just corporate, it, like the, it, it makes the, the environment super corporate. And, uh, and, and dude, everybody's going to feel it. Everybody's going to feel it. You, you guys, you guys have got to understand too. The mom and pops are smart too. Yeah. They're not going to just sit and sit around and let private equity come in and take the whole slice of the pie. They're going to, they're, they're, they're starting to get, they're starting to step up their game and, and know that, Hey, I'm at $5 million right now. If I hired a couple people to mentor me or recruit or, you know, put a better sales process or a better install, whatever it is, if I do that and I scale it to 20, 25 million, I could make money too. That's right. So that, so you guys got to understand, like, it's not just that private equity is coming in here and making it corporate and making it strict and making it bulletproof and all that. It's that the mom and pop shops are smartening up too. And they're not going to let, you know, they, they know that they need to acquire better talent and they know that they need to be smart about who they're going to hire so they could go to the next level. Cause dude, those people are going to want to sell too. They want to make money too. Yeah, so you well, can't blame them. No, not at all. And, and, well, and so that's what I really wanted you to, to, to start to, talk about is the opportunity for the privately held businesses that are so small. But you know, what's crazy is that um, there's a decent, there's still a decent chunk of businesses that did feel like those, the, the 21, 22, the unicorn year growth. Yep. And then they learned like, Oh shit, I got to pay attention to, like, I, I'd stop paying attention to some things because volume was coming yes. in. Um, and Labor they, management. And they, <laughs> absolutely. And they, and, uh, and by the way, inflation and pricing increases and yes. did you change your pricing and all the yes. things. Um, but what, and even debt, like people are coming up on debt now, like, and they're like, oh shit. So, so there is a, um, there's a really good opportunity for those. And, and I'll, let me back up a second. You, you and I were just talking about this for a while about Q1. Yep. Like, you know, we were just talking about, wait, man, how's Q1 going? And, um, and which is normal conversation for us. And I, and I gave my two cents on what I believe Q1 is going to be it's shaking Bloodbath. out the way I thought, Bloodbath. but if you get through Q1, yeah, if you can get through Q1, you, you, I think you, you're going to be just fine this year. Q1 is yep. going to be hard. But uh, here's what I was going with that is I actually think there's another little wave coming in here in, in uh, acquisitions, in potential acquisitions for private equity. It's those that saw that, say, 5 to $20 million scale yes, or 15 million, and then, like, didn't pay attention to the business. So it's kind of like, a, oh, shit, like, uh, now what do I do with this? Because yep. I've, I've had those conversations with our own customers um, that, you're, that are going to say – all right, man, like I'm out. Yeah. And, and, and because you made some money or you, you know, sold it to X, Y, but now it's getting hard again. Of course. So, um, so for those that are maybe thinking about that, that certainly is 100%. an option. Like, so dude, I'll give you the sweet spot right now. The sweet spot for any contractor out there, whether you're roofing, solar, fucking electrical, HVAC, whatever you want, whatever you're at, the sweet spot's between 20 mil. Uh, 18 to 20 mil, 25 mil around there. You could make great fucking money at 20 to 25 mil with 20, you know, 15 to 20% on the bottom. Yeah. Right. Um, that is the sweet spot. It's manageable. It's, you could still turn it to <coughs> two to three, maybe even four times, um, as you grow it. But private equities new game is going to be that 20 to $25 million, um, contractor. Everybody is swept, got swept at a hundred mil yeah. and they learned their fucking lesson, yeah. <laughs> right? They learned that at a hundred million dollars, $150 million business, yeah. it is hard to sustain. Number one, number two, it, it, it's, it's hard to grow past that, right? There's probably maybe five, 10 contractors across the nation that get past a hundred mil. I mean, 150, 200 mil. It's hard. So, and, 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 and the people that can operate that type of business are few and far in between. So private equity is not stupid. They're not going to keep dumping right. their money on that. So I think the biggest opportunity for, you know, for Rhino people and for anybody out there that's listening um, is growing to 20, 25 mil profitably, structuring a management system, you know, getting your HR department nice and, and, and sophisticated 
your marketing department, right? Yeah. At, at that scale, like the the company you could can run can run on you know four to six top tier people. It doesn't need a hundred people to run the whole company. So I believe the best opportunity right now is 20 to 25 mil, whatever sector you're in. Um, those 100, 150 million dollar players, they're still going to buy them, but they're not going to trade as much as the 20, 25. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, in, in the, you know, just want you to be aware, you know, to listeners to be aware, like, and, and to know the actual numbers, if you had, if you wanted to put a goal in place, cause we did a, you know, a podcast, you know, a few, I think it was about a month or so ago with Hoffman around like building their budgets from the bottom up and like yep. his plan. And then, um, but we are also just talking about how you can lose great talent if, of you, if you don't pick the right partner too. Yep. So all these things, you know, play out, but, but you might only be one good hire away from some scaling. Exactly. bro. So people, that's people the, need to pay attention. That's the to point that I'm right getting there. at. That's the point I'm getting at is, um, you know, you, there are, there is a lot of really great talent that can, that can be that one person that takes you to a whole nother level. And I promise you it's out there, but you have to actively go look for it. Cause I promise you your competitors are, but, but people are, you know, people aren't, you know, are leaving after a while. Oh, they are. So they you got to pay they, attention to those things. You got to understand that like this <clears throat> private equity showed a different lifestyle to everybody. Like we, yeah. dude, our employees are not stupid, right? Yeah. Like our employees are not stupid. They know we sold. They yeah. know that the wealth that came behind it, like right. they're not just going to sit around and be like, well, you know, let me keep making them money. Like these people have an opportunity to make money too. They could start their own business. Like I believe there's going to be a spur of, of technicians, sales guys, installers yeah. uh, of, of, of them being, uh, you know, self-conscious and looking around being like, Hey, I could do it too. If you know, if well, dumb as Ishmael could do it. Why that, not? This is part of, this is the trend, right? Like this is what happens. Yes. Like it's the same thing. So it's just another cycle of it coming about. Agreed. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of opportunity, even for anybody who's private, to really scale your business and find solid leadership. That's the point I'm getting at with all Agreed. this stuff. But these are the great conversations that we have, and then we talk about yeah. different ways to tackle them and shit like that in our groups. But, um, you know, you, you said a couple of things. One, yeah, you got to make sure that your organization is on point, your leadership's on point, your marketing's on point, like all the things are in place. Um, and then, you know, some of the podcasts I've been doing is around are you adding anything different to your, to your service line? Are you just trying to like focus on blocking and tackling? Are you um, like, what are you doing differently? Or what are you doing to make your customers more sticky? Um, your, your memberships stickier, right? Like there's yeah. things. And, and this is where the, the Nuve conversation I think is an easy segue because uh, it certainly helps with that. <laughs> it's and, gonna, it's, it's it, dude. And I'm not trying to say because I came up with the product or, you know, because I've been working on it for two years. Uh, Nuve is going to be hands down the highest retention for memberships, retention for client, period, that this that that our sector in the HVAC in industry will ever see. Like it literally mimics the alarm model. Like when you go buy get an alarm, what happens? You gotta redo the whole software for them. You gotta buy new panels, new sensors, and their sensors only communicate with their panels, which is their screen on the wall, right? Like you have to go with them, right? Same thing with the third, the idea behind the thermostat is making sure that people know who serviced it, who installed it. The first place that people go for their air conditioning when it's not working or when they need something, guess what? It's the thermostat. thermostat right? You know how many thermostats have been installed this year or last year, or whatever, in a 12 month cycle, millions and millions of thermostats are installed and all they say is Honeywell, Nest, Echo Bee, yeah. whatever on it. But nobody knows who installed it. Nobody knows who serviced it. They go back on Google, right? So you're repaying for that marketing. That's right. Like, you, you understand what I'm about to tell you, ready? I go to a customer's house and I replace their induced draft fly motor or their sensor, igniter, whatever. And five months later, something goes wrong. They're going to go back on Google and Google Next Gen click on an ad that, that I'm, that I'm paying for to be able to contact me back. Like, bro, you're paying again for that lead. That's already, that's already been purchased. Now imagine if you could go to the thermostat, you touch the button and it dispatches a technician or something goes wrong. The name's right then and there, yeah. right? Like, or on their app. Now they don't have to Google you. Now your marketing dollars are not going to be spent on your same clients. They could go on their app, right. dispatch a tech from their app. On the app, it's all co it's all color coded and Lego uh, and their logos everywhere of Next Gen, uh, Morris Jank, whatever company you're at, uh, Bob's Heating and Air. It's on your app and it's on the wall. The 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 marketing Im impact that it's going to have is going to be insane. And the cool cool part, nobody can work on that unit but you because you're going to get an alert of saying, "Hey, somebody's trying to get into your unit." Can you imagine knowing 
you know how many ther- how many systems we've installed at next gen 40 50 thousand therm- i mean uh, systems you don't you don't think I know that there's other people working on those systems that, you know, they might have called somebody else because we couldn't get out there fast enough or they might have called somebody else because, you know, we pissed them off or whatever yeah. it is. But I don't know that because they already called somebody yeah. else. Now you're going to be able to know and be able to save that client. Hey, we noticed you're trying to get into your settings menu. Is there anything we could help you with? Like, that's mind boggling to me how we installed millions and millions of thermostats and nobody knows who fucking installed them. Yeah. Like nobody ever thought about connecting the CRM back to the thermostat. Like <laughs> that's well, dope, I mean, right? Well, but also tech, I mean, this is just the advances in technology, man. So it's just like AI shit. Like, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And then when it hits, you're like, what was I like? How exactly. did I not do this? Yeah. So, so I want to hit, hit on a few things because I mean, I've known about it for, for a while now. Yep. Um, I saw, well, actually, we demoed it at, at Rhino, uh, Rhino X, X last, last year. year. Yeah. Um, we had like, yeah, finally it was done. Cool. That Jeez. was awesome. It looks fantastic. It looks awesome. So if I'm a contractor and I was like, okay, I've heard, you know, I've heard Ish talk about Nuve. Um, my question to you would be, what what is like, what's the main like objection that you get or the main things that people are asking you? Like Dude, as the main a, thing as, is how much is a contractor? It? How much is it? They're like, Hey, Shmer, how much are you going to spend it for? Look, it's 395 bucks. It's almost the same cost of a, a, as a Nest thermostat, but you're going to be able to control that customer from, from day one to the day they, they buy a new system, right? You're going to be able to uh, uh, auto update the thermostats. You're going to be able to send messages on the thermostat. You want to say happy, but you want to program it. So I can say happy birthday to your customer by next gen, or you want to put, you know, a Christmas logo on your, whatever you want to do. It's a customizable thermostat, but it's, 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 it's 395. That's the, the, that's the one question I always get. When is it ready? It's ready already. There's 110,000 units getting done already. You know, who's it going to be available to service Titan users first, just because we were able to connect the CRM right. all the way to the thermostat. Um, yes, it's going to be available for the other CRMs right now. We're just focused on the, on, on, on service sign just because they had, they gave us API access and we're able to connect it, but your customer experience is, is, is going to go, it's going to mind boggle you because you're going to be able to, um, the, dispatch a technician from the thermostat you're going to be able to you know not talk to a csr anymore right you're going to be if something goes wrong you're going to be able to know it before it goes wrong the best part about it and what i'm more excited about is to be able to see the labor management on side of it because guess what right now everybody in the fucking world waits till it's 100 degrees on in in april or may and it's 100 degrees and now you have 10,000 thermostats getting turned on all at once yep. and get how, how many warranties are you running right now how many install crews are being sent to warranties technicians are being sent to warranties you know why they're being sent because everybody turned on the thermostat at once right you're going to be able to auto cycle these units from your from your dashboard from your from your app so you know the csr or dispatch or production department manager whoever you have managing your client uh experience they're going to be able to you know auto start units based on zip code or install dates whatever you want to do if you have 10 units that are installed in you know in phoenix arizona i mean in glendale arizona mm-hmm. you can start all 10 units and be able to see okay cool all 10 units let's turn on they were able to satisfy the thermostat if one of them didn't go you catch it in in january february and in, in in march not in june july and august so imagine what that's going to do to the labor side of it yeah, you didn't have to roll a truck out there bro yeah, yeah so i mean th- th- i mean I, so it, it is cool. Like the, all of that is cool because I look at it as I an mean, efficiency and it's a massive cost savings the, and it's still is sticky and it allows you to catch shit quick. Sometimes even yeah. before the homeowner, dude, it's a, it's a thermostat, but essentially it's the best marketing source that this industry will see hands down. Yeah. Dude, you're going to be, why wouldn't you give these thermostats to every single one of your clients? Yeah. Because what's, what is a, what's a average cost per for you? Fucking 500, yeah, a thousand, whatever it is. So like, I'm saying, so you, I mean, this would be like replacing it. So what, what is it retailing for? Or what are people retailing it for? Uh, I'm I'll, that you're seeing like, it, do you know, I'm like, probably going to do uh, at next year. I'm probably going to do about 1200 bucks okay. for it. Um, but essentially we want to prove out a model where you want to give them out to every customer. Gotcha. That's the model you want to prove out because if you can cut your marketing in half by putting, installing these thermostats, because now guess what? You're going to be able to have information of like, Hey, I have 20, 10 year old units out there, right. With an, with a new thermostats. Let me, let me cycle them, see if anything's wrong. And now if anything's wrong, look trip out on this right now, if anything's wrong, when you, when the technician walks in the door, the thermostat, it's saying that there's something wrong, not the technician walking in and being like, Hey man, there's something wrong with your unit. 
the technician is coming in just to verify everything that's that the thermostat saying so imagine what the mindset of the consumer is going to change they're not going to be on your technician oh you're just trying to sell me hey man i'm just here because the thermostat's telling me there's something wrong with the unit and i want to fix it be proactive exactly yep, gotcha so now you bring all the walls down the customer's going to be yep. way more you know comprehensive of the situation because it's not a a, a a human being telling them or selling them something it's the thermostat telling them hey there's something wrong i'm Morning. here to fix it here's your options yep yeah that's i mean all of that stuff is cool. It's, 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 it's been neat to watch this thing like come along, Still, you know, huh? um, and, and then to actually see it. Cause every time we see, you know, uh, Ishil post pictures in our group too, just <laughs> what it look like, it, it looks good. Cause Dude, you want something to look like shit on of the course, wall. Of um, it, I mean, it looks like tech, like it looks, you know, fancy. It's clean, man. It's clean. So, um, it does, it does look good. <laughs> um, so, so the reason I, you know, I thought it made sense to talk about it is it is a tool that you can use. That's, uh, easy to install, it makes a customer more sticky for you. Hundred um, percent can cut marketing costs when you get enough of these things. Labor, going. You know, labor cost efficiency. Rule. I mean, all the things retention that you got to be paying attention. Retention to. is the number one thing. Mm. You should be paying attention to your retentions of the customers. If they use you once, how many more times are they using you? By putting this thermostat, you're a hundred percent guaranteeing that they're going to call you back, whether they're pissed off or not. You're gonna get a call because if if they want you to take that thermostat off, they're going to have to call you to get somebody else on or somebody another contractor is going to have to go in there and take it off and guess what Boy. you're gonna get an alert yeah. saying hey your thermostat's been deactivated now you know somebody else took that customer from you and guess what you send them roses a gift <laughs> card of hey did we do something wrong right but you have you actually know that there's something wrong right now nobody knows yeah, shit right. like customers are pissed off at us at next gen or whatever company you're at Nobody knows. You know how you find out? A Yelp review, a Google yeah, right. review, all that. And you want to you want to protect your image no matter what. So now you're going to be able to, to find a pissed off client before they go on Yelp, before they go on Google, right? So so let's do this because I want to segue. Just give real quick if somebody's want, if well I'm not sure when they can or if they can start to order. They're going to start ordering yeah. probably in March first. Okay. Uh, Nuvehome.com guys, we're taking in applications in there. Um, like I said, these are 110,000 units. I promise you, they're going to be gone the first month. So um, we are going to take some pre-orders. Everything's going to be COD. Um, you know, you you buy as many as you as you want. Um, there is a perk if you buy the first 100 thermostats, you do get a customizable app with your logo. Um, so the customers turning on the thermostat turning off scheduling the fan doing everything on a customizable app that's going to be on their home screen okay that's going to be on their home screen because right now they're going on an nest app they're turning on their unit they're right. turning it off it's going to be a customizable app with your logo and when once they go on the app everything's you it's not nuve they don't i don't even want the customers to know it's a nuve thermostat i want them to know it's you yeah so i know that um you know to anna her the app matters so much here. It needs to be easy. It needs to be easy to use. Super. It needs to actually fucking work. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it actually needs to work and it, and it does look really good and it is super easy. Like even the color coding things, like simple things super that, that we're, our brains are trained to look at. Of course. Um, so now you've got some, uh, some additional tools that you can add to your, to your belt and, and use. And, Amen. And um, so I want to segue into uh, data cube stuff. So, you know, the thing that, that uh, I, you know, uh, I I don't know. I think I got to tell you guys this in the group, but I don't know that I, I I had like confirmed it yet. But we made an offer to a phenomenal hire. Um, and there, and here's here's where I'm going with it is we needed somebody internally here who could get into all things service Titan, all things service Titan, not nice. just the marketing shit, all things service Titan, and start connecting dots between uh, our reporting dashboard and service Titan because there's like uh, lead attribution issues all the time, like all they're the being time. changed by CSRs mm -hmm. and shit like that. And I'm like, when we dug into it, I was bl I, my mind was blown. I was like, what in the hell? Like it's insane. how once we dug into it, I, I learned how much was not being class, you know, or not being tracked that we actually brought in that the yeah. And then I'm pissed at myself yeah, thinking you're underperforming, keeping, but you're really not for not and not, and not even catching it quicker. Yeah. So, and, and you know, and sometimes like I lost a customer I should not have lost. And I was like, how the hell did that happen? And that's what triggered it for me. And I was like, okay, we got to solve this problem. That's now, dope. um, you, one of the things I've learned over all these years is Sometimes the bet the most of the time the best thing that contractors will do is nothing with it. So I have to do it for them. 
you know, not all. I'm saying a lot, though, are just yep. like, yeah, yeah. Like, you look at the closed revenue and service hat, and you're like, oh, they fucking sucked, or oh, they did a good job. But really, they didn't look at all the lead opportunity that came in. But here's Amen. the biggest takeaway I had from it. Um, and what I like about DataCube, too, is it shows, like, all the data, all the accurate data in, the, in there. And it's a clean, they're clean apps. You've seen them. If you've ever, if you've ever posted them, if you just go on to website. Uh, DataCubeAI.com. There you go. And you'll see all these things. But what I like to catch is, and you got to know these numbers. I wanted to know them. Every you know lead that you pay for, you have to track in some way. You've got to know exactly what's working for you. But you also got to know hold yourself accountable for what you're doing. Amen. So so if you have you know pending proposals out there with cash attached, you know with cash attached to it. Let's yep. say you you did you gave them three proposals. You got to, and you still know like okay, well that came from somebody who searched for AC repair. You haven't closed it. Well, that's not on marketing. It's still course, on you. But you need operation. to know the number, of course. And then if you know the number, then you can rehash that stuff. You can go back after it. You can try Amen. and chase it down and lock it down. But but then at least you know if it's legit your marketing company or you. You're yeah. the contractor, right? I guarantee you half of it is is the contractor, too. They're always trying to blame the marketing company. But, dude, you guys got to hold yourselves accountable, too. Well, they'll that's, also blame Service Titan, right? Cause uh, yeah, because, that part, because too. Because there's that, that, yeah. that factor that comes into it as well. So it is a mixture of things. It I is. understand how it's a pain in the ass sometimes. I mean, and this is where, you know, it sucks to be Tom Howard in our group because he's the one that we always <laughs> go to and meet up on for it. But, you know, you got to have something in place that's more than just, like, I've pride we I've prided myself. We built this business on the back of our reporting being so transparent, listening to every single phone call a human being here in the US to hear how was the call handled by the CSR and did you get a book? That's dope, man, honestly. In in that not way, a lot of people provide that by the way. I don't know if you know this, but like I would say probably nobody provides that they're actually here. You you guys are actually verifying that the call is being booked properly for us. Like that's super well, dope. Well, you're listening to it because I need, I'm being held responsible for of course, lead, of course. Oh, I right? get it. Trust so, me. I get it. It's fucking, it, it mind boggles me how nobody does it, but you, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, in, um, it, it was just one of these deals where I thought if people just know exactly what we did, we won't lose them. That was the, that was the mentality of it. Like, you know, early on and it, it is true, but also like it shows if you sucked, like, and you have those months yep. too. So, but DataCube was like, it was one of these things that came from your original conversation with Tom. And like when you were starting to think through and oh, uncover yeah. things on how you could track and measure stuff. And then you rolled out, you know, DataCube. Yep. And, and a lot of people, like, especially out of the gate when they were, they were building it, were posting, they're fucking taking pictures in their oh, offices yeah. and stuff with the, yeah. you know, the boards and stuff like that. So it almost felt like Nuve took over in your brain for a little bit. Oh, yeah. And, and you haven't talked about DataCube as much. So I wanted to ask you, like, what's the update with it? Or what's the update? Dude, what's going on with I it? think we're close to 550, 600 contractors Holy deep shit. in it now. Okay, I didn't know so, that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't promoted as much just because I've been working on Nuve so diligently. But, like, DataCube is, dude, that was my, you know, Tom came up to me and, and presented the idea. And then I kind of took it from there and made it, you know, a live KPI software, made it dope as fuck, obviously. But, dude, the, the, the idea behind it was to know because you, you look in 2019 how you were making fun of me right now i didn't know what gross profit was yeah. i didn't know what a pnl was like I, I i heard of it but i never really like understood understood right. it and and when tom came to my shop and educated me on it that's when i'm like okay so in order for in, in order for the pnl to get affected that one of the biggest one of the biggest things that affect your financials is the performance of your people yeah, your marketing does, you know, your marketing affects it and your pricing affects it and all that. But essentially the people are the ones that run the PL. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 the idea behind it was how do I increase performance or how do I get to know live data coming in so I can make better decisions on who gets what lead? Yeah. Which is, dude, you're paying twenty dollars an hour right now, twenty five bucks an hour. If if the dispatcher is lucky to be making that decision, which is the most critical decision in the in the basic concept that I came up with, right? In the basic system that I came up with, it's the second step. Booking is the first step. Assigning the call is a fucking art. Okay. Assigning the call to the proper technician, to the proper project manager, to making sure that you can capitalize on that. And, but, but everybody was doing it based on a fucking whiteboard on their training room or based on their service manager, like telling them, Oh, this guy's hot right now, or this guy can sell this. Like nobody was actually grabbing actual data and making those decisions. And that was the concept behind data cube. When I came up with it, you know, I think it's been two and a half, three years that I came up with it. And it was, it was that I'm like, bro, we can't, rely the whole you know system of operation based on a twenty dollar 
$25 an hour dispatcher. There has to be different layers of people in there with different knowledge to be able to make the decision of who gets that call. Obviously, you guys know right now, it's shoulder season. Yep. You're lucky if you're getting demand calls. Yep. But right now, you're giving it to the dispatchers, giving it to the technician that they like the most yep. or that they have a better relationship with or that went to high school with them. And your, your business is being fucking ran on that. Yeah. Instead of like, okay, what's going, who, like, what are the numbers telling us? Who's, who's, who's selling the most IQ right now? Who is, you know, better on drain calls? Who is the best performer on water heater flushes? And, and actually make an educated decision on that, not a $20. An yeah. Hour who's the strongest person yes, to run the lead? Bro, yeah, of course. Yes. So, I mean, that makes yes. the most sense. So, uh, but this has been, um, Something that you've, you, I mean, you've dealt with the same, like you've of dealt course, with this. Of course. Um, and everybody listening at some and don't matter the scale. With this. And don't matter the scale. It doesn't matter if you're a $1 million fucking company or a $100 million company. The the art of assigning the right call is what makes the the business, you know, those those double digit profits. Yeah, it, it is. It, well, yes. Uh, because even, I mean, the human being. Of course. Is, can impact that P&L. Yeah. Of course. Either way, man, just by making those decisions. But they're not thinking about it no, like that. No, They're not thinking about they're it. They're putting like their feelings in there instead of looking at a fucking report. It's an emotional decision. Yes, not a, yes I understand. So, so this is where I'm going with that is this is a great tool to use that if you right now are relying on somebody checking the box and they pick up the phone <laughs> or wiping um, a whiteboard and, and by the way, like <laughs> don't yeah or, or the whiteboard still, which is Bro. still everywhere everywhere i walk into shops and there's whiteboard with technician I names just saw one, and man. different kpis I on it just saw one. and literally the service manager sometimes will forget to wipe out the kpis for two three days so they're going based on data that's four or five days old like I'm like, what the, like, are yeah. you guys serious? Right? Yeah, not, th not <laughs> that you're saying you can't use whiteboards, yeah, to but, like, but, but not no. for, yeah, but not for, but you know, I mean, that shouldn't be your, no. that, that you should be using that just for some visual reference yes. that you're showing to, yes. if you want people to see or yeah, whether it's like not that, rankings though. or whatever. Yeah. So you got to do something with that. But that's why I was saying, like, I had to step up my game this year. And so that hire that, that, um, we just made the offer to is coming from the private equity world. So nice. So uh, he or she has been managing, uh, you know, about $25 million in marketing revenue across a lot of different locations and different brands, but knows service Titan in and out, in and out. So, so, you know, you know, R is coming to Rhino X and yep. I've been working with R. I'm like, do I, what, like I've been beta testing this. I didn't know R was coming. Yeah, dude, he's so speaking. Fun. He what were I? you going to tell people? <laughs> what do you <laughs> mean? Nobody knows. No, everybody knows just not you because you don't pay attention. Shit. Um, but yeah, dope. So, I'm gonna text him right now. yeah, so he's coming in too. Um, but you know, it is, I have, you know, we had to step up our game too and just, and do it for him. Like go in, look at the, mar the lead attribution, find out what's, what's wrong, what isn't wrong. Cause it, add the revenue to, and then make sure the contractor knows, Hey Ish, you got 572, you know, thousand dollars in pending contracted revenue that came from Jesus our leads. Christ. And so then I want to put a number to it. I want to put, what did you pay? What did you pay for those leads? Yes. That way we know exactly what did they even look for? So you can't pull this bullshit of like, oh, they searched for next gen and said, well, they fucking typed an AC repair Bro. and chase it all the way down. So that's what I'm trying to, to roll dope. out that way. I, because I'm still doing the CSR, you know, the CSR assessments. I brought CSR coaching in house last year with Liz. She's a badass, you know? Um, and I'm trying to do all the things to be the solution. I, I don't think people thank you enough for that though. I don't think people thank you enough for all the things that you're not supposed to do that you do for the contract. I'm an agency dude. that doesn't I work know, like though. that. No, yeah. I get it. But like, you're just supposed to provide the leads and the leads get taken, you know, for, by the contract. You, you know where I, you know where I really messed up, I think over all these years is, um, and we just had this conversation and, and I, I messed up from what I thought the contractors would do. This is where I'm going. Is, is <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not. I get where you're going right there. I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it the right way. There you go. This is how you track. What well, this is what legit a lead is a new bookable lead and service call. But I wasn't ever no no contractor was looking at that and actually comparing apples to apples ever. So I was like trying to be the good guy, do it right, make it really, really, really drill down. But they're used to just looking at leads in a different exactly. way. Exactly. Like, they're like, well, I got. Why don't I have leads? <laughs> I got, the, you know, the, my cost per lead was, you know, $14 in LA. I'm like, bullshit. That's how you know that it's already fucking wrong. Exactly. But, but I had done that forever because that is the integrity of this business. You know me personally. You know how we run this business. This is how we work. But I, I think I screwed myself a lot by 
assuming that eventually it would catch on and it didn't. Mm -mm. But this, like bringing on Data Cube and some of, of these things, is starting to level up the game again, which is like, I agree. cool, we've been doing this shit for 16 years. So I that agree. part I'm grateful for. And the reason I thought it was important to bring it up is like, this is the year you might want to keep track of your shit really, oh, really good. Bro. And onboarding with it isn't difficult no, to get it all quick, set up. It's quick, easy. I think in the next six months, we're, you're going to be able to auto onboard online just by putting your information. One of our reps will call you just to upload, just to show you how to upload pictures and, and your logo onto the dashboards. But you'll be onboarded within 24 hours Dude, instead you, you of you fucking I, a week or you something. You know what I love about all this? Like, it, it, it's interesting that you and me are just sitting here having this conversation about shit you've created. <laughs> uh, not even next year at the moment, yeah, right? Just, man, that's but dope. but this is like a look into. If you look past like all the all the flashy shit, like yeah. th this is a look into the actual heart of I agree. Ishmael Valdez. That's what that's that's what that is, and and it is. Do I want to? Uh, do I want to make money? Yeah, of course. But if you could do it by also helping creating these, of course. That that's dude, the game. I you I think you just I think you just did I think you just define why I do things like. To me, when I look when 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 I was growing next gen and I was going through my journey, the whole time I was looking at the problems that were occurring in front of me, and everybody would everybody, and I mean everybody from our past contractors, yeah. they just brushed through it instead of like, okay, cool, there's a problem. There's no th nobody knows who installed these fucking units. Yeah. How about we fix that? Okay, thermostat. Hey, there's a problem. Nobody knows like who's hot, who's not. Everybody gets old data from 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 their service managers it might be inaccurate data or whatever it is nobody's really displaying performance cool let's fix that and i'm dude and i'm telling you in a cool way there's more shit that i haven't even thought about yeah. that i don't i'm not capable of, of thinking about like we all need to work together lsd the whole yeah. industry needs to work together and 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 start like raising the bar and start using infusing more technology to be able to do bottom line profit more yeah the fuck there's nothing wrong with profit no and and but we need to use the thermostat the data cube service sign that you know everything that's that's accessible to us to be able to capitalize on it and add more points to the bottom dude there's nothing wrong with profit i'm not i'm not ashamed of profit man honestly i'm not because that means that i'm, I'm looking at things a different way I'm living, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the operation to be able to produce it more. So that's what, that's what we got to do. And, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. I promise you one thing, as long as I'm here in the trades and as long as I'm, you know, working in, in inside the businesses, I'm always going to look for something to innovate. Always going to look. And I don't do it for, you know, the money obviously is, is dope, but like I do it, just imagine how much, like if we could help a million contractors yeah. instead of a couple. Yeah. And, and that's why I think it's been cool about, you know, this is a, a really cool segue. Well, by the way, like, Congrats on, like, those were two major, like, two major things in addition to <laughs> a major thing. That's you know, with, with Next Gen. But it, it, uh, it is fun to be sitting in conversations with all of us, especially when you get into, like, our LSD calls because you kind of got a little bit of a version of it on one of the past episodes. That but, one was but, dope. And, and, but we go sometimes super deep. <laughs> and and it is cool to hear everybody, like, throwing out their ideas. Yep. And, like, I, you know, and, and you look at just the, you know, the group of us and – the different skill sets that we all bring Dude. to the table that Agreed. we're thinking through the different things Agreed. and stuff. But, but that's the one commonality between all of us is that it's the, the, the intention is to, to help the industry. hundred fucking percent. Because we've all done a hundred percent. The, the, the intention of LSD is a hundred percent to be able to innovate and help people out. That was the whole, that was the whole idea behind the group message is, Hey guys, like, we all, we're all dope. We're all talking to each other on an everyday basis. How about we put each other on a group? Yeah. You know, the LSD name was a dope ass name. I came about it. <laughs> right. But I'm saying like, how about we all like work on it? Like everybody, like dude, Tommy's a beast at the cost yeah. center. Right. Uh, Tom is a beast at financials. Uh, you know, uh, Aaron Gaynor, he's a fucking animal at yeah. plumbing. Right. Chad Peterman, he's a freaking level headed leader that like just, you know, is always constantly pushing forward, whether he takes one step or a hundred steps. Like everybody has a badass fucking yeah. story and strength inside of the LSD crew that makes us better. And, you know, I think, I think that's what people need right now. Dude, I got to tell you this. So when my mom finally, like I, I was talking about LSD, our, our little peer group, and she's like, how did you come up with the name LSD? Only Ishmael would come up with something <laughs> that dumb. I was like, no, it's not what you think. Like, it's not <laughs> what you think. No, you know, but it was funny to, you know, cause I mean, it is, 
it, when we came up with it, I was like, it makes sense to us, like to our like to our little group. Dude, we're degenerates, whether yeah, we man. see it or not. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's fun, like all good. But but we, you know, we, we we challenge each other, you know, not just from our business, but from like a, a personal, personal, level? like you okay. know, like you got in such good shape, and you were focused you. on your health and doing all this stuff. And uh, I know because I saw all the pictures. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get everybody to sober up. <laughs> That's right. Trying to get everybody to sober up. You know, well, I've not gotten on that one yet. Dude, I mean, Chad is impressing the fuck out of me, man. Yeah. Honestly, that He's, guy is on a different level right now ever since he stopped drinking. So congrats to Chad, man. Yeah, I'm man. Just, I'm glad that it's being like put out there and like glorified. I think it's pretty uh, cool. We need uh, it. We I've need, not gotten on that. We need it now. Yet, but we need it. 2024, you need a fucking crew that's going to get you to 2024. 2024 is going to be a fucking war. Okay, yeah. and in order for you to get through that war, you need your people, man. LSD is my people, That's man. Right. You need you need those people. Yeah, and those are people who are going to be real to you and hold you accountable, and not just be a yes man. Or yeah, yes man. there like, you, you need, go. You need that, like people who are going to talk real. And you got to be, you know, um, you got to be w super vulnerable like, 100%. with that group, and, and know that know, <laughs> know that you're probably going to get, you might get your balls busted, a little hey, bit you're, and, and we're going to talk shit on you. Yep. Right, but and, we do it in love. And then we're going to fix it. Exactly. And then we're going to help each other fix it. Exactly. So I want to roll into this last piece of it because we're already probably, what, 50 minutes into this thing. Hour, almost 45, baby. Are we? Okay, cool. So, um, so yes, f I've said it over, time and time again. Find a good group of people. Even if it's just one person Dude, you have to start. Somebody's going to exactly. hold you accountable. Don't like overthink the process. Find the one person that you know you can that you can reach out to that will help hold you accountable. Uh, and if they say, hey, we'd like to be one of you guys, you got to keep in mind, like our group, it's, uh, yeah. it's hard just to get our group. Yeah. If we didn't, we have it booked every month the same time. <laughs> and, people, and Tommy will and we still, still miss book, it. You know, book yeah. stuff over it. No, so it's... Dude, you, 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 I'll add one thing to that. If you are going to find a group though, that, or a person that, that, that you're going to vibe with and you're going to, that's going to hold you accountable. The one thing I'm going to tell you, you got to be able to respect them, man. If there's no respect in that group, I guarantee you it's going to turn into a shit show. The reason why LSD works uh, for all of us is because genuinely we, number one, we care about each other, but number two, there's so much fucking respect in there. Like everybody in there has done something incredible in their life. And, you know, and everybody in there has, is, 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 is willing to help each other out. So the one thing I could advise you is whoever you choose to take on your journey and, you know, call your own crew, whatever you want to do is make sure you guys have genuine respect for each other. Yeah. And don't hide the bad stuff. That's oh, actually where the, that's, that's, that's where the most, that's the most progress Hell is. Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, we have some pretty deep conversations too. So I'm personal just saying, too. And I, yeah, personal shit too. All, all the above, man. So, so. Um, so the last piece is, you know, uh, and I want to finish off with this because, uh, I think this, I think we're going to roll this thing out probably even next week. I would I'm imagine. Down. So, um, so this will be rolling out. I uh, just, well, I guess we're still, we're in the first, God, it's February 1st already. Holy shit. Man. Before, when, when before Rhino this. for sure. So, um, Rhino, like Rhino X, one I want to tell you, I don't know if you knew this or not. I think you did, but you gave the dopest testimonial last year and we used that as like part of, part of our clips. So thank you for that. It was Appreciate like, you. so it was so good. You interviewed him on that one too, right, Zach? Uh, uh, so, uh, Thank that was you. perfect. So we'll do something similar again this year, but it was perfect, man. We had every, everybody on there. Like to me, that's the most proud thing is hearing not just like my buddies in there, no, but just the others that are just saying all the things. So I'm excited because it's coming up again, right? And, and it is difficult for me because the X stands for experience. You're seeing others putting out their show name X. Whack ass. Legends. Whack X, ass. Different things, you know. Whack ass. And, and listen, I understand it. But it's not this. No. It's not Rhino. X. There's only one Rhino. So, so you go to this group, and and I like people. There's a wait list for it. You don't just get to pay money and come to the thing. No, you man. actually and you have, better not change that though. You, I'm if, not once you that. change that, I'm not. Changing I think it, it. It'll, it'll it'll change. It, you'll be one of. I already you, told you I'm not changing. Yeah. So Thank so you. I'm not changing. And, and everybody said the same thing. Uh, Leland told me last year. He's like, you need to start charging more for this thing yeah. too. I'm not doing that. I actually just brought in you know more sponsors this year to help pay for the things to make the experience even oh. better. Everything's gotten more expensive. The fucking speakers have gotten more expensive. <laughs> Fluoride costs. Fuck, me I'm gonna start charging a lot of you. money. What the fuck. <laughs> so right? I, 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 but it's worth it because it's one hell of an experience from the welcome party to the dinner to oh, the yeah. day session and uh, the one on ones. So, so 
you know, you, I mean, you jacked my uh, Rhino X hoodie last year, so I had that <laughs> I still have it, too. Uh, well, well, I have a few of them, so you're good. But I was freezing my ass off because I got, like, oddly cold in, you know, in Phoenix, Arizona at that time. But, you know, li- for the listeners, you know, just to understand whether it's, you know, Rhino X or something else, don't just go to take pictures and no, shit no. like that to these things and waste anybody's time. And don't just go and take notes and then don't do anything with no. this stuff, which is, you know, still what happens a lot. And I talk about it all the time. But when you went to... Think about this. Think about how many Rhino X you've been to. Three, four, I think. You've been to all of them. Yeah. So the, what, tell me, tell me like, what is, what is the, the best thing that you get, you get from that? Not, not personally, because personally we're all there. Yeah. I understand what you're getting personally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> professionally, what is like the biggest thing that you take away from an event like that with all the shit and things that you've done already, the relationships that you already have, you know, I love asking this question of, of the legends that come in and speak like the good riches and the Geigers and stuff. And, and I love their answers. I love the old people, by the way. <laughs> I love the old people too. <laughs> uh, don't, Hey, by the way, we, I was talking about this with Peterman um, and Gainer uh, when we were, when they were out for uh super meeting um, or whatever the hell it was, one of the meetings they were out here. Doesn't it kind of feel like there's a passing of the baton happening yeah. a little bit? A hundred percent. And I love that. And I had that conversation with Goodrich because yep. he and I went up with and spent New Year's with him and Wendy. And I said that to him saying, how would he take that? And he's like, yeah, man, like it, it feels like there is a passing of the baton, yep. like a changing of the guard is happening, which is oh, pretty damn cool, I man. That, that I agree for sure. And then we can continue to respect like that, what they've done in the business. And Always. now it's time, you know, for another shift. Good. All of it's cool to me. Of I'm course. so happy to be a part of it and to be able to bring all that shit into one Dude. room is awesome. But to you, like, what do you think has been the biggest professional takeaway from that event? I don't want to say ignorant I was. Well, I was kind of ignorant. How ignorant I was when I first started Rhino X to not thinking that, like, why you 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 said something earlier, like, um, how I was nervous in there. Like, I was I wasn't nervous because like I was nervous because there's people in that room that have accomplished a million other things, more b- bigger and better things than myself. And and the the thing that 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 I could still remember. I was I was nervous for them to judge me, yeah, and for them to be like, "What, what did what did he do?" Like, yeah. I I felt when I was talking in front of people that I hadn't done anything to be able to be proud of yet. So the biggest the biggest thing that I've learned at Rhino X, and I'm still you know going through it, like how amazing fucking people are in there, like the level of of of, of IQ in the operation of EQ inside the operation, like the level of sophistication in there it's like if you're watching a high school game and you're thinking you're like the high school stud and then you walk into the fucking new york yankees dugout and you see fucking six <laughs> seven three hundred fucking 25 pounds walking like you see those kind of players that are you know live and breathe the the business they they feed themselves based on the business like me seeing that type of, of of sophistication made me step up my game. I guarantee you, if I've never stepped into a Rhino X event, I would still be the fucking cocky, chest pounding fucking. I'm the best thing that ever happened to this industry. Walking into that, walking into that room with fifty other, um, you know, coworkers. Right, they're coworkers to me. Walking into a room of fifty other coworkers that have accomplished things that I've never imagined in my life humbled me down to be able to say hey man like can i get some help on this right and that's the dopest part about the rhino x is is being able to be inside of that yankees dugout for sure dude so that like just made my day let me just tell you something the, you, anna knows this and so i've been i've waited years to reference this with you so um you talk a little bit about imposter syndrome was kind of what you're feeling. Like, yeah. I feel like I didn't accomplish anything and now I got to go whole in front <laughs> face to face with, with these all people. these legends yeah. like sitting in this room who've done big, big, 100%. big things. And then you got to tell your story confidently. Yeah. That's what I was nervous about. I know that's what I'm saying. But part of my, of my whole entire goal with you specifically was to put you in a situation to show off what you've accomplished without all the shit, the flash, all yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah. to put you in that situation to step up just like Thank they you. have done. And I did it again and I did it again, bro. And so very intentional. So you're going to ask in and we leave here about this, about, I said that in the first one, I was like, I'm going to do, I, so with Goodrich, I was able to help with this podcast and he was able to help me and I could say, Hey, 
let's bring you on. Let's expose this whole other side of Ken Goodrich. That's dope. And that's part of what I get to give back in this industry is that, you know, Mike, you know, I got, I got competitors, you know, that, that come at me all the time. I don't, I don't care. Like if you know me, you know, I want good for you. Even if you're Amen. a competitor of mine, Amen. I don't care. Exactly. I just want to know, like, I legit want to ask questions when I'm curious about Fuck things yeah, that you're bro. doing. And those people in there have the answers. And, and so that's just it. You, you cannot, if you come to a Rhino X and don't walk out with something, it's your own fault. Like 100%. you just didn't do what you were supposed to do. And that happened with the contractor that la that last year I let him in. He was small, 3 million said he was going to be, you know, outgoing and meet, you know, meet, uh, Frank or meet Leland or whoever he wanted to meet. I can't remember which person it was. He didn't, he didn't do any of those things. Didn't even hardly talk to anybody. And so at Tommy's event in Florida, we were all at, he came to me and said, Hey, um, can I come back to Rhino X? And I said, no, I Good. said, I said, you can't. And he well, said, a privilege, man. so he said, and it was like, and I did, wasn't like an asshole about no. it. I just said, did you do X, Y, Z? I knew no. he didn't. That's why I said, did you do X, Y, Z? No. Well, why didn't you do it? I was just nervous and scared. He apologizes to me, like heartfelt, poured his heart out to me, like apologized to me, eyes watering and said, I'm not like, I want another shot at this year. I'm not going to do it. This is what I'm going to do this year. Mm. So, so here's what I said. Prove it. Good. For I you. said, so who do you want to talk to before, before I say yes, you have to reach out to whoever it is he wanted to reach out to. We'll get you the number and you do those things. And when I see that, then I'll say, yeah, 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 you're in, you can do it. And he did. Dude, it's pretty cool, man. You, that, that's dope. You know what? That's dope. And why I would have said no, honestly, just because not, to be a dick though, because he took the seat that somebody else that's the point fucking that's would the have point. died for to be in there. And 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 that one person that could have been there, guess what? They would have heard something and it would have changed their whole fucking business around. So number one, shame on them. I don't know who they are. But number two, like if you are coming, bro, like, dude, don't fuck like listen. Like you, I even I'm like sh I shut the fuck up. Listen. So, so listen, here here's the thing. I can I can respect that that person came to me and said, "Yeah, I, I messed yeah, up. I messed dope. up an opportunity, to, you know, and, and felt intimidated. Like three million dollar contractor sitting in there with all these monster players. Yeah, you get intimidated no, a little yeah. bit. And if you're an introvert already, yeah, it is hard. I understand it, but that, it. but that still takes the place. It's the unknown of who could have, who could, could have been. That's there. an excuse in my mind, though. <laughs> so 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 this year though, like, like I said, yeah, it was. I think that's growth for that person, right? Oh, that amen. was growth for that person amen. to come in and say, okay, cool. Now they made it to 5 million. Good dope. And, Congrats. and so it's like, and, and I'll introduce you. I don't want to say it on, on, you know, on air, but Please I'll tell do. you who it is. So that way you Please can, do. you can meet with them. But that's what the event is about, man. You got to come in. It might just be that you got a cell phone number and you got somebody that you can text and reach out to. It might just be that you gave you the confidence because you heard yep. everybody else. Like I, I, you know, we have the Rhino the charge award that we give away to those who took things from it and implemented it. And I love seeing the submissions come in for yep. it. It's so badass to see that. Uh, Jason Bueller won last year. He's a dope uh, ass dude too. Bueller's awesome. So he'll present this year. He doesn't know that yet. He's about to find out <laughs> this <laughs> nice. year, but it's exciting to be able to bring all these things together. And so this is where it's like in the RLSD group, I'm like the most unique um, one, because I'm outside the contractor box, but I know all, I work with so many contractors that I'm able to bring different perspectives. But you bring a huge input into our group and a, a, a unique perspective that makes us think too. So yeah, you, yeah, you do marketing for us, but like your input's still fucking dope as fuck too. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Well, listen, you know, we're already an hour into this damn thing. You know? <laughs> um, I appreciate you coming. I'm glad you finally came in, dude. Dude, you know, thank you for having me, honestly. And congrats on the on the podcast and congrats on your sale too. Thanks, well, that man. That was fucking dope. So thank you, man. I appreciate let's that. Let's keep, uh, let's keep hustling. <laughs> All right, listeners, you know what to do. And that's something, right? Because we okay. gave you a couple different options of things that you can do. And again, just because it's January doesn't mean, it's too, or February, it's not too late to change some shit no, up. If you haven't go. got on top of it, by let's the way, go. I promise you, you're not, you're not alone if you, if you haven't, but you know, you reach out to somebody, find somebody who will help hold you accountable Facebook, for not doing fucking things. fucking Instagram, some, some, dude, look for help. Yeah, man. You can't just be ambitious. Like, yeah, I gotta take action too. Cause otherwise ain't shit gonna happen. And what is the definition of insanity? To expecting a different <laughs> result, right? And do, yeah, doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. So don't be that for your yourself right yeah. or your family or for your employees and their families all those things do something you don't got to do everything but you got to do something no zero days amen